Amen. I'm just old country hick that loves Jesus. You can tell by the sound of my voice. Some woman told me one time, or didn't tell me, she told somebody, I can't listen to him, he's too country. I said, Jesus listens to me every day. Amen. 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 Every day. Jesus listens to me every day. And I listen to him. Amen. I'm trying to hear him more and more each and every day. What a time we had this morning. Praise God for his presence and his power. Thank God for his word and his spirit and the people who will trust in his word. The Lord has exalted his word above his own name, the Bible says. So we need to hang on to the word of God no matter what. When everybody else is turning away from the word of God, we need to hang on to the word of God. Amen. A lot of people, as Pastor Mark got up here a few minutes ago and talked about the apostate church. What is an apostate church actually? It's a church that's still meeting. It's, they're still going along like they're right, but they're not preaching the message of the cross. And without the message of the cross, God can't do anything, as the brother said. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible says all God's works are done in truth. Amen. And the truth is Jesus and what he did at Calvary. Jesus has always been the truth, but until he died on the cross and you put your faith in him and what he did there, he wasn't your truth. The truth is, is what he did for you there. Amen. Jesus is the truth, but what he did at Calvary makes him your truth. Nothing else makes him your truth. What he did at Calvary. For that's where you were baptized into him, into his death, Romans 6, 3. And I'm just so thankful to... Uh, know what I know today and, and, and be able to see the, the Word of God that's supposed to be a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Uh, and is if it's in the light of the one who declared he is the light. Amen. You know, and the apostate church uses scripture, reads scripture, and they, they, they preach everything under the sun, but they don't point to Calvary for initial salvation and daily salvation. Even after you're saved, you need the message of the cross. Because if you remove your faith out of the cross and you put it in something you're doing, words you speak, some action you do, the Holy Spirit's done with you. Amen. I don't mean he's given up and thrown you away. I mean he can't work in nothing else but your faith in the cross. Amen. Because the Bible says God only works in truth. Amen. Psalms 33, 4. I'm not recording yet. This is all just free up front. <laughs> For the word of the Lord is right. And all his works are done in truth. How many of his works? All of his works are done in truth. That means he does nothing outside of truth. So when we gather into a congregational setting or wherever we are listening to someone on television or studying the word our own self, if we're not seeing it in the light, hearing it in the light of the one that gave his life for us at Calvary, we're being lied to. And what's being put on the table is... is uh, just flesh. And the only thing the flesh can reap is corruption. Amen. Amen. So, thanks for having me this weekend. I, uh, a lot of places I preach, I don't get to preach there again because they don't like what I preach. And uh, that's all right. They needed what I preached. Amen. Amen. Uh, every once in a while, you'll preach somewhere where they're like, good Lord, who let him in here? <laughs> I, I, that's, that's right. Now, we've got a while, so I can tell this story. They invited me down to Texarkana about four or five years ago, to a, a woman's a shelter. And it's, uh, it's, not, it's not a shelter. It's a, it, was a, it was a place where you either you go to the penitentiary or you go there. And they give you another chance. And you wear orange and you have rules and all that. And they said, would you come at graduation? Some are graduating this coming weekend. Would you come and minister? So I showed up. And I got up there, and there's a couple of hundred gals sitting on this side, and, and their families on this side, and, and uh, they're getting ready to graduate a few of them, big ceremony, and the men behind me in suits, and, and uh, I didn't have a suit on. <laughs> and they're all looking distinguished and everything, and I got up there and preached the gospel. I mean, just like I do anywhere. Wherever I'm invited to go, we're going to preach the gospel. I don't care what they wanted to hear, what they did expect or didn't expect. I'm going to preach the gospel. Amen. And I got up there and preached the gospel. And I told them, I said, right there in front of all those guys, I said, that, listen, the steps that they taught you in here won't keep you from coming back in here. But Jesus and what he did at Calvary will keep you from ever coming back in here. Amen. And, uh, of course, uh, they never invited me back. <laughs> 
But needless to say, when I got done preaching, I said, now who wants to be saved today? Who wants to go to heaven? Who wants to be forgiven of their sin? And some big 300-pound guy on the front row with overalls, no shirt under it, he just threw both hands up, tears running down his cheek, and then hands begin to go up all over the place. And that's what happens when we preach the truth. They can have the results that they want, but when God sends us, God gets results. He wants results. I don't care what man wants. Hallelujah. So uh, thank you for having me again. It's always a pleasure to be here. Glad to be with Pastor Mark tonight. He's coming to be with us next month. And uh, so uh, I'm just thankful for this Crossline Radio and Crossline Television. As I said this morning, I'm partial to this ministry more than any other. Because they let me minister here. They let me be a part of of this ministry. I appreciate other ministries. I appreciate, I pray for them, I sow into their ministries, but I'm partial because I get to be a part of this. Amen. And so where you're you're allowed to be a part of, God's going to use you. And so I expect to be used by the Lord. He didn't call me just to get up and preach and nothing happened. He called me to preach the truth and everybody that believes it he moves in. He begins to work in their life. Amen. And I appreciate the Lord for the messages that he gives me, especially this morning on biblical obedience. And we're going to get back in uh, to that tonight. So if you'll go ahead and turn in your Bibles, we're going to start with the scripture we ended up on this morning. And that is Romans 6. I love Romans 6. And, uh, and it is key to what we believe. That you have to understand, if you don't understand Romans 6, it's a guarantee you don't know how to live for God. You're just floating through life. You don't know, you don't, you don't even, you're really, listen, you don't know very much at all about the Bible unless you know what Romans 6. You can't live for God. You cannot live for God. I can ask you what it means to live for God, and you can tell me, well, going to church, reading my Bible, praying. I didn't ask you, what do you do for God? I, what do you do when you, I said, how do you live for God? How do you find the power to turn the other cheek when the Bible says you should, to go the extra mile? How do you find the power to love those that are hating you? How do you live for God? You don't know that without understanding Romans chapter 6. It's an impossibility. Preachers don't know that. 60 year ministry preachers don't know that. How do I know? Because they're not preaching it. When you know this, you preach this. When Paul got this, he didn't preach anything else. As a matter of fact, he said, when I was there among you, I didn't want to know anything other than Christ and Him crucified. Why? Because it is the power of God. It's all that God works in, this truth. He doesn't work outside. God does not work in mysterious ways. He works in the truth that's been revealed. Amen, Brother Curtis. I can see I'm going to preach myself happy again tonight. It's going to be good. Romans chapter 6, verse 17. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart. Did you see that? Not just with your lips and in your mind you had these right thoughts. You obeyed from the heart. That form of doctrine which was delivered you. And we know what form of doctrine that was that we believe that God says when you believed it, you became obedient. You obeyed it. God sees your faith in the cross as an obedience to Him. Not after you got saved and had to go get water baptized. That's an act of obedience too, but that didn't save you. And that's not what God saw that he said you're an obedient child of God. It's your faith in the one who was fully obedient unto death, the death of the cross. He saw your faith in that. He saw your belief in that. And he said, obedient. Did you see that right there? When, look, look, and here's here's how we know that he's talking about the gospel, the message of the cross. Verse 18, being then... Made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. No other message did that, has ever done that for anybody. Only what Jesus did at Calvary, and you're believing in that with the heart, freed you from sin and made you a servant unto righteousness. Nothing else. Going to church can't do it for you. Reading the Bible every day can't do it for you. Feeding the hungry can't do it for you. Nothing you do can save you. And when you think 
that something you do is going to get you in heaven, you are eliminating yourself from your trip there. Because when you think you can do something, you're telling God, I can earn this. Jesus really didn't do it for me. I can earn it myself. And God says, no, it's a free gift. You accept what my son has done or you're not coming. Amen. 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 So we starting out here tonight. And before we move on, I just want to backtrack this morning. Uh, we're not going to turn to these uh, two scriptures that we dealt with this morning, but one of them was Romans 5 and 19 where the Bible says, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Adam became a sinner, and when he did, we all became sinners because we were in him. You were in Adam when he sinned. Shouldn't be that quiet. That means amen, brother. The Bible teaches we were in Adam when he sinned. We all came from him. I don't care what color you are. You come out of him. And, and when he sinned, we all became sinners and death became, uh, it just became prevalent for every man, woman that would be born. We're born conceived in sin. We're sinners when we get here. That's why we start sinning. But then not only was Adam sin, we piled up more when we got here. We just started sinning, lying, cheating, whining, griping, you name it, we just started doing it Amen. because we were sinners, amen. amen. But by one man's disobedience, all of us were wiped out and were born dead, separated from God. But by one man's obedience, Jesus Christ, we have been made righteous. And then we looked at Philippians 2, 8 that says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And this morning we looked at how he's not talking about here that he was obedient all the way up unto death, although he was, he never sinned. But this one scripture is saying that he was obedient unto death. Because he had a commandment to come and die. It was a command. He said, no man take my life from me, but I have the power to lay it down and take it up again. John 10, 18. Because my father has given me commandment. He had a command. You will go die for the sins of the world. And he said, yes, sir, I will. And he did. I like to say it this way. I, God, fought, the father loved us so much, he gave his son for us. The Son loved us so much, He came and gave His life for us. The Holy Spirit is here today, and He loves us so much, He keeps reminding us of what the truth is, which is what the Son of the Father did for us at Calvary. That is the truth that God works in. That's the truth we preach, that if we're not preaching, if we're not relating God's Word to the living Word, then we're not preaching right. If we're not preaching about Jesus... And what he did at Calvary, we're not preaching right. We're off track, and everybody that's listening to us is off track. Amen. amen. Thank you, Brother Nate. And I like the amen sign. I got one on my pulpit at home. I hold up and wave. Amen. When the folks are looking a little tired or something, I just kind of wave it. And they go, oh, oh, yeah, excuse me. Amen. <laughs> amen. Pastor Curtis, preach on. Glory to God. So it was Jesus' obedience Unto the command he had to go and die. And because he died, we all now could die with him. And be buried with him and raised up in newness of life with him. You do understand that. I know you do. When Jesus died for us, we died with him. We were crucified with him. We were buried with him. And when Jesus came up out of the grave, guess where we were? In him, with him. I'm so glad I'm with Jesus. And it all began at the cross. That's where we were crucified with him. And if my faith remains in what he did there, then I can quote uh, Romans 8.32, and it's a reality for my life. For God spared not his only son, but delivered him up for Curtis Hutchinson that with him he shall freely, freely, freely give me all things. Amen. Thank you, brother. What's in there? Good old water? Thank you. You're a good man. Praise God. Man. Bless you, brother Nathan. He, he got you a new job this weekend, didn't you? Now, I don't mean that. He knows what I'm talking about. Got you a new job this weekend, didn't you? You know what I'm talking about. 
I gave him a new job like all our children in our church. I say, your job is to hug Brother Curtis every Sunday. You come find me, you give me some love. Amen. We teach our people to love on each other. Glory to God. When I first got in a spirit-filled church and saw men hugging on me, and I said, uh-oh, what's going on in here? <laughs> you know, I'm a Marine, ex-Marine, you know, and an old country boy, and I seen big-bearded men hugging on each other. I said, something wrong. I don't know about all this. <laughs> and then I learned it was the love of God and the joy of God. Thank God we're saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, just don't try to kiss on me. No, no. We'll be all right. <laughs> We'll call that holy hug the holy kiss, the Bible. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So tonight I want to look at a couple of other scriptures, and we're going to be able to see uh, a little bit more about this thing called obedience. And let me say it again tonight. The reason the Lord's given me this word is because uh, we have to understand things in the Bible. If we're not, we'll get hooked up with the wrong people and carried away such as the Church of Christ that I mentioned this morning who preaches wa water baptism is your salvation. You know why it can't be? Because that's something you do. They believe that now. They, they Even this one guy told this other fellow out there where I work, this guy asked me, he said, what about the soldier out on the field who he's heard the gospel, he's rejected it, but he's out there and he's been shot and he, know, he figures he's finna die and he says, Lord, I'm sorry, I, I believe in Christ. I, I believe that he died. I, I accept that message is true. And, and, but I, and the guy asked him, he said, but he can't get water baptized. And the guy told him, Church of Christ guy told him, he said, that never happens. I'm telling you it happens. People cry out on their deathbed. I'm telling you it happens. How do you know? Because the thief on the cross was about to die. And he cried out, remember me. And Jesus said, you can count on it. Hallelujah. You can count on it. That's what he told him. Today you'll be with me in paradise. You can count on it. You don't have to get out off here and go do anything. Just stick with me. Believe in me. You'll be with me forever. Glory to God. You know what God and the Father saw when that thief on the cross asked Jesus to remember him when he came into his kingdom? God the Father said, obedient. Obedient. Didn't have to do anything but believe. All you got to do is believe. Now let me make this point. Once you believe, there are lots of works that take place. You're just not saved by them. The Christian is busy about the things of God. Amen. You, you, you know what the result of being a Christian, of being your faith in Christ and what he did at Calvary? Following him. Amen. If you're not following him, you better wake up. Amen. Either you never were saved or you're saved and you've turned away from him. Amen. That's right. Amen. See, Christianity is a narrow, an absolute. If your faith is right, God's giving you grace and there's the fruit of God in your life. That means you're living an obedient lifestyle according to the Word of God. That means you found a place to be in church and you are faithful there. You're a person of prayer. You give and support the ministry. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Obedience are acts that we do perform, but they're all in the mind of God. If they are right, then it's because of our faith in what Christ did at Calvary and God finding us obedient. And out of that obedience comes much more obedience. You quoted it just a few minutes ago, Romans 1, 5. The Apostle Paul says, we have received grace for obedience to the faith. God gave you grace not only to save you and get you into heaven, but he wants to give you more grace, amen, amen so that you can walk in a greater place of obedience. There are works, of being water baptized is, a, is an act of obedience that flows out of you being an obedient child of God. But folks who just get water baptized, who have their faith in water baptism and not what Christ did at Calvary exclusively for their salvation, that is not an act of obedience. And God sees that as an evil act. That is an e even though it's a good biblical thing, if I get in the tank and get baptized to try to make it to heaven, God sees that as an evil act. Because I've replaced Christ and Him crucified with an act I performed. Amen. Amen. So we became obedient the moment we believed. I didn't, I didn't have to go to church. I started going to church. I didn't have to get water baptized to become obedient, but I got water baptized. Because if I am living 
with my faith in Christ and what he did at Calvary, that means I'm receiving the grace of God and God is at work in my life and people know it, they see it. A scripture just came to my mind. Let me, let me turn over. It's John 3 and 21, maybe. <laughs> I know what it says, but I th John 3 and 21. But he that does truth comes to the light. Why? That his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought of God. Amen. Amen. Let me read that again. Amen. He that does the truth and that's what you did when you believed in Christ. You did the truth. That is your act of doing, believing in the truth. Remember what they piled up around Jesus and said, what must we do to do the works of God? What did he say? Believe on the one he sent. Amen. When you began believing in Christ and what he did for you at Calvary, you began a work right then. That was the work of God to believe in Christ. Glory to God. You, you know what you began doing? The truth. You were doing the truth. As long as your faith is in the cross, you are a doer of the truth. And there's a manifestation of there. We see right here, there's a manifestation there. And the manifestation, your deeds are manifest, that your faith is right. But it also tells us that last phrase, that they are wrought in God. God's behind what's going on. Amen. God's behind what's going on. It ain't you just out there trying to look spiritual. Your deeds are manifest that they are wrought in God, produced by God. Amen. Hallelujah. Whoa. Whoa. Hallelujah. If our faith is right, God gives us grace. Amen. And if we're receiving grace, we're living obedient lives. And the Bible says in 1 John 1, 6, if we say we have fellowship with God, but... We walk in darkness. What does that mean? That means our faith is no longer in the cross even though we blah, 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 say it is. Amen. Even though we still have the lip service, we have to obey from the heart. Amen. Even after we're saved, we have to keep obeying from the heart, believing with the heart that I was crucified with him, that what he did there on that day is good enough for what I need to be the husband and the father and the preacher and the co-worker and everything I need that day. What he provided there is all I'll need today and I'll humble myself unto being obedient unto his death. That's just good Bible preaching. That's all it is. Most of the church don't want to hear this. They want to get some guy up there saying, Don't you know God just loves you? He just loves you so much. He just loves you. And God does love you. But let me say this. It's a powerful statement I'll make tonight. Just because God loves you does not mean His hand is not against you. I'm going to say that one more time. Thank you, Brother Nathan. I like the amen sign. <laughs> Just because God loves you does not mean his hand is not against you. Because he resists the proud, whoever they are. Who is the proud? There's only one answer. It's not the man that walks around with his chest out, what we picture. The proud, the proud is anybody who's got their faith in anything other than what Christ did at Calvary. That's the proud. And God resists them, whether it's us who have been saved by grace, but now we're trusting in the word of faith, the, our words to speak, or we're trusting in uh, uh, what we do of anything, then we have misplaced our faith from Christ and what he did at Calvary, even though we wouldn't dare say that. But Jesus knows our hearts. He said, you worshiping me with your lips, Amen. but your heart, what I can see, what I'm looking at, is far from me. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. So now I want to look at, if we can, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And I'm going to make it through this lesson tonight, no matter how late we stay here. Amen. If y'all need to leave, you go ahead and leave. But if you love the truth, I know you'll be here till I'm done. <laughs> and if you don't love the truth, the Lord's going to turn you over to strong delusion. <laughs> what the Bible says. Thank you, Nathan. You can just shout. That'd be, that'd be good, too. Can you shout and say amen? That ain't shouting. <laughs> Let me hear you back there. Thank you. 
I, I do that to Andrew at home. I said, hey, Red, shout. <laughs> Second Corinthians 10, 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought. Everybody say, every thought. Say it one more time. Every thought. Bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought. How serious, how busy is this life? It is so busy, we're being told to bring every thought to the obedience, of not to our obedience, to the obedience of Christ. You see where it's pointing? Back to Calvary. See what happens when you begin to learn the truth that this Bible is about Christ and what he did at Calvary, then you begin to see on every page the apostle and all the writers pointing back to what Jesus did at Calvary. The Old Testament pointed ahead to Calvary. The New Testament points back to Calvary. It's all about the Lamb. Amen. It's all about the Lamb. You ever, uh, when you read the Bible and you see in the book of Revelation when the Lord allowed John to peek his head into heaven and see all his, his, all his comments were about the Lamb. Something about the Lamb. He, did, he didn't talk about a whole bunch of other stuff. Matter of fact, he said, look, I can't even explain what I saw, but the words he did have to say were all about the Lamb. It's all about the Lamb. I said it's all about the Lamb. And the word Lamb speaks of the cross. The word Lamb speaks of Calvary, our sacrifice. He was obedient unto death, and I'm to bring all my thought, every thought. When something's coming ahead, and I'm like, oh, I just don't know about this, I'm to take it to Calvary, because there I'll get wisdom. There he was made unto me wisdom, 1 Corinthians 1.30. If something's going on, and there's chaos, and there needs to be order, and there's something just uh, out of order, all I have to do is take it back to Jesus and what he did for me at Calvary, and know that as long as my faith is there, God's going to provide for me today what I need need the peace the joy the strength the everything I need God's going to give it to me Amen. there's nothing that I need God won't give me I said there's nothing that I need God won't give me that's one of the purposes of Jesus dying to provide me with everything I would ever need to live this life we've been given the knowledge of Christ and what he did at Calvary and that's all we need to live a holy godly life amen, that's it. amen. That's obedience so and, and you know there's a scripture where's that at uh, it's not in my notes but I think it's Hebrews I preached it yesterday morning part of my message Hebrews 12 3 talks about lest you grow weary and faint in your minds consider the one who endured such contradiction of sinners amen. You see what the answer is when your mind starts growing weary and you don't know if you're going to make it? Look back to Calvary. Look back to Calvary. There's where he endured. There's where you will endure through faith in him. There's where you'll find the Spirit of God giving you grace, which is God showing up to work strength and endurance in you. Amen. So we're to bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. How many thoughts? Every thought. When I don't know what to do, when I'm confused, when there's chaos breaking out, take it, to, take it back to Calvary. And that sounds like, what, what, I mean, that don't make sense to me. It should make really good sense. That's where you became a new man. That's where you received your justification, your sanctification. Right there, not three days later at the resurrection. Right there on the cross, you were justified by the blood. That's where you were made a new creation in Him. Sanctified, redeemed, got the wisdom of God. Well, I just don't quite understand all that. Well, start coming to church every week and studying the Bible. Listen to the broadcast. By this time next year, you'll be saying, Glory to God, I got it! But if you don't have it, you need to get it. I promise you, once you get a hold of this, and we should be saying it the better way, once it gets a hold of you, because this is the truth, this is when God really gets a hold of His people. 
This is how God gets a hold of His people and ignites a fire in their heart. Where do you think the phrase comes from, they're on fire for God? Amen. You know where that comes from? In the Old Testament, when their faith was right and they presented a sacrifice out there, the fire of God fell on that sacrifice. Today in the New Testament, it's when your heart is really believing and not, it's not just lip service. When you're believing with the heart, you're living this life and they say, man, they're just on fire for God. God forbid they ever say about me, oh, I remember when he used to be on fire for God. It needs to be, my Lord, that guy's on fire for God. That means his heart is believing in the one thing that produces fire from heaven to this heart. Amen. Now, a little scripture that's kind of tough for us to believe is Philippians 2 and 12 and 13. And there's been lots of controversy over that. But when you're walking in the light, scriptures are clear. The, the, the scriptures were never clear to me until I was able to walk in the light. And the light, walking in the light is where you're living according to the word of God based on your faith in the one who claimed to be the light through what he did at Calvary. And understanding comes of the scriptures. Understanding of the scriptures don't come no other way. If your faith's not in the cross, all you're going to understand is what that preacher understands, and it ain't much. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's, right. That's proven in Luke 24 and 45. If you're watching by internet, thank God for you. If you're taking notes, here's a good one for you. The only way you can understand the scriptures is if your faith is in the cross. Yeah. Just because you got saved through faith in the cross doesn't mean you can understand the scriptures. Your faith must remain in what Christ did at Calvary so the God, the Holy Spirit, can teach you. Remember, all his works are done in truth. His teaching works, his, his uh, sanctification works. Everything God does is only done in truth. Amen. If you missed this morning's message, you need to get that and, uh, as well because it was really, really good. Amen. And I'm not going to go into some of the other things we ministered this morning uh, because I know it will be made available to those who want to hear it. Uh, but Philippians chapter 2 verse 12 says, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed. Everybody say obeyed. obeyed. That one word right there is going to clear up the rest of this. That one word in knowing what we know about what real obedience is, is going to clear up the rest of this scripture that we're about to read that's been like, I don't quite understand that, and there's controversy about that. There's no more controversy when the light shines on it by the Holy Ghost. It's kind of like why the Church of Christ, why they preach water baptism for salvation, and there are millions of them that won't make heaven because their faith is in their works. Let me say it again. If your faith is in what you have to do to get there, you're not going. That's Bible. That's plain old Bible. Amen. So we have a whole denomination out there that's preaching wrong stuff about baptism because they don't understand baptism in the light of Calvary. If they did, they'd understand the baptism into the death of Christ, Romans 6, 3. And if they understood that, they wouldn't be telling you, you've got to get in the water to go to heaven. They'd be telling you, you've got to get in the water if you're saved and you want to be obedient now. And you want to have a testimony. That's, that's biblical. But that's not going to get you to heaven being water baptized. Amen, that's right. So their whole doctrine is off. And, and there's no telling how many millions are missing heaven because false doctrine. So when we talk about things like obedience, if we don't understand what obedience is, we got folks out there doing, 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 thinking that it's obedience and God's recognizing it and it's going to get them into heaven. And it's not. That's right. The only thing that gets us into heaven, remember Romans 5, we were made righteous by one man's obedience. That's right. That's not our obedience. One man's obedience. And through our faith in what the one man Jesus did for us, which was obedient unto death on the cross faith in that we're considered by God obedient and and faithful amen but without our faith in him we're not so the Bible says in Luke 24 45 Jesus is resurrected from the dead he's walking along with the two guys on the way to Emmaus and the Bible says and he opened their understanding of the scriptures and said the son of man must suffer and die and be raised the third day 
Before that, they had no understanding of the Scriptures. They could read it and hope and believe and try to believe and pray and just struggle and be in chaos, not knowing what it really said. But when Jesus gave them the filter, when you see the Scriptures through what the Son of Man did at Calvary, then you'll understand the Word of God. Then you can walk in the Word of God. Then the Word of God will be a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. Then you have fellowship with God. But if that's not what your faith is in, you can read the Bible all day and walk in darkness and be lying to yourself. Because that's what God says. That's what God says. If we say we have fellowship with God, yet we walk in darkness, which is faith in anything but the cross, then we lie and do not the truth. Doing the truth is faith in the cross. And just because you say you believe in Christ and what he did at Calvary doesn't mean you do. You know the manifestation of those that do? Here it comes. It's an absolute, emphatic manifestation. You are following Christ. If any man come after me, if any man come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. And there is a manifestation of that. Those who come to the light want their deeds to be seen, that God is in this. They're wrought of God. So don't come telling me you believe in Christ and what he did at Calvary if you're not living an obedient life. You're a liar. And God said it, not Brother Curtis. See, people got a problem with God, they just throw the rocks at me. That's right. They had a problem with God, they stoned Stephen. They had a problem with God. They took Paul out of town and stoned him. And God said, get up, we're going again tomorrow. (laughs) See, they got a problem with God. They get mad at us. We're the ones they can see and touch, so they take it out on us, but they're going to answer to God. We love them enough to keep telling them. No matter if they hate us, call us a cult, no matter what they say, we love them enough to keep telling them. If they come in here and shoot me, all they did was promote me right up to heaven. I'm out of here. The the, the ISIS and the Islamic or whatever they call them, demon worshipers and and satanic mess, if if they cut my head off, they can hang it on their fireplace, I guess. I'm getting a new one. And they'll never touch that one. They can have this old head right here. It's going to be dirt anyway. If I'm getting a new one, they'll never touch. They'll never lay a hand on me. They'll never touch me. With my new, they'll never touch us. So when we understand what obedience is, and we better if we want to be able to live for God, it's our faith in Christ's obedience unto death. That's obedience. That's when God says you're obedient. And if you keep your faith there, you're going to live an obedient life. People who aren't living in obedience according to the Word of God, their faith is not in the cross. Even though they say it is, I'm sorry to bring that news to you. And you know, I just don't know about that, Brother Curtis. There's some people, I know they're believing like I believe, but they're just not living it. And I'm sorry to break it to you. We all struggle, we all stagger around at times, but I'm telling you, those who have their faith in the cross are moving forward. The sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. That's Bible. Now the church you were talking about, Pastor Mark, don't like to hear this because they're they're not looking at Calvary. They're looking at the words they speak. They're looking at what they're doing, and that ain't getting them a thing. God ain't never given you anything because you spoke the word. God gives you everything you've got because you believed the word. Believing the word, not speaking the word. You see, your faith moves from what Christ did to you doing something, speaking the word. Nothing wrong with speaking the word, memorizing the word, quoting the word. Nothing wrong with that at all. We need to be doing that. But when you move, and I I know what I'm talking about, I used to be there. I used to be in that. It's a mirror. I lost, I lost my house, my land, my vehicles, and all kind of stuff for God to bring me down about that high. You ever seen that show called Honey, They Shrunk the Kid? <laughs> Honey, God shrunk me. 
But you know why he did it? The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, all for the same reason, so he can get you back to seeing clearly. Back to true faith and grace. So we see in verse 12, Wherefore, my beloved, as we have always, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now some people think, yeah, well, God sent his son, saved us, and he's gone now, we, we, now it's all on us. Well, the next scripture proves that wrong, for it is God which works in you. And it's God working in us, and we, we're working out what God's working in. But remember, how is it that we work? Amen. How is it that we obey? Simply by believing in the cross. Amen. Because as long as we're believing in the cross, God is working in us both to will and to do of His good pleasure. Amen. Good. Amen. Did you get that? Amen. I don't think you did. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, he's not talking about doing everything just right like the Bible says. He's talking about what they believed. He's talking about what they believed. You've always obeyed. Now, Paul's the one who wrote this. Paul's the one who explained what obedience was by believing that we, that we believe that form of doctrine that was delivered to us. He's talking about what they believed. As you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Salvation only takes place through our obedience. Through our belief in what Christ did at Calvary, which God calls obedience. God calls that doing the truth. Amen. We, we don't teach that near enough. I'll tell you that right now, pastors. We don't teach that near enough, that doing the truth. Is faith in the cross Amen. alone? Alone. That's right. alone. That's right. Faith in the cross is doing the truth. How do I know that? Because Paul said to the church in Galatians chapter three, verse one. He says, "Oh foolish Galatians, who have who has bewitched you that you no longer do the truth?" Yeah. That's right. Amen. Because they started out believing right, and then somebody said, "No, no, 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 that's okay, but you got to be circumcised too if you really want to be saved." And they started listening to that, just like the naysayers out there to say, "Yeah, yeah, 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 the cross, okay, but you also have to speak in tongues. You also have to be water baptized. You also have to do this, this, and this." And those are liars, my friend. Those are liars. Those are all good things that we need to be involved in, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues, getting water baptized. All of us need to have it like the Bible says. Amen. Right. Amen. But can't nothing give you the power of God but believe in the truth. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. So Paul's talking about, when he's talking about being obedient, he's talking about what pertains to our salvation. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling because it's God working in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. And when you see the word pleasure and it's talking about God's pleasure, you have to bring into the equation faith because it's impossible to please God. It's impossible for God to have good pleasure in anything if there's not faith there. So when we bring faith into this equation, then it points to what our faith has to be in. And as long as our faith is in what Christ did at Calvary, and I know people say, well, my faith has been in Calvary. They tell me that all the time. Well, that is what I believe in. And I'm like, why are you going to that church over there then? Because they don't preach that. And they're like, what do you mean, brother? I'm like, they don't preach this. They don't preach this for initial and daily salvation. They preach works. They preach this message to get you in the kingdom. They really don't even preach the message to get you in. They just kind of mention it and say, if you'll believe it, and that's true. If you'll believe what Christ did for your sins on Calvary's cross, you can be saved. That's right. That's right. Even if it's a church preaching law 99% of the time, if they accidentally pour the truth out in a three-second phrase, somebody can get saved because God works in the truth no matter where it's delivered. You understand that? Just because there's a church across town that's preaching law, 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 if somebody gets up and says, Jesus died for you and gave his life for you, if you believe that he did that for you, you can be saved, you can be out there saved that night. 
Even though they're trying to teach you how to live for God now based on what you do, which is a lie and won't work, never works. So just because people think their faith is in the cross doesn't mean it is. And let me say it again. If it is, you're living an obedient life. Doesn't mean you don't stagger around, trip up, and mess up. Sometimes we all do that. But it means that we're headed in the right direction and people know it. People know what you got with God going on. If it's just between you and him and nobody knows it, you ain't got what you think you got going on. This light we've been given, Jesus said we are the light of the world. Let me tell you something. It's bright. It's to be seen. Amen, Brother Curtis. Amen or oh me. One last scripture tonight. Romans 16, 24 through 26. One last thing I want to show you. Romans 16, 24. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. That's what the Bible said. We know the grace of God is God at work, so what's he saying here? May you find the Lord God working in the midst of you. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Now he's talking about the preaching of the cross. He's talking about the cross because in 1 Corinthians 2, 7, 8, the Bible says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew because had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. That was a mystery. The devil did not know what was going on when Jesus was being crucified. But when he died, he figured it out because his head got crushed. How did the devil's head get crushed? The power of death that the devil had, he had it removed from him. It wasn't the resurrection that crushed his head. It was the crucifixion. The Bible says in Hebrews 2.14 that Jesus, through death, took the power of death from the devil. That's awesome, isn't it? For all the people who've been taught all their lives that the devil was running around rejoicing for three days and thought he had won, and Jesus come out the grave and he said, "Uh oh, that's not what the Bible taught." No, that ain't what it said. Colossians chapter two teaches you very quickly that in the cross of Christ he defeated, he triumphed over all principalities and powers, triumphing over them in his cross. The devil was defeated because a man showed up and lived 33 years without listening to him and committing a sin, and he was obedient unto the death of the cross. And that took the power of the devil, the power of of death away from the devil. Death is separation. Every man and woman is born into this world separated from God because we're born in sin. And our sins and iniquities have separated us from God. We're born into this life separate, dead in our sin, separated from God under the power of the devil. But when the blood of Jesus flowed out of his body, a perfectly obedient man for me died on that cross, obeyed unto death on the cross. The devil lost his grip over all that was separated. When you come to Christ, The devil is no longer your ruler. You've been snatched out of the fire. You've been snatched out of his kingdom of darkness and placed in the kingdom of light. Glory to God. I'm talking about now that Peter went on back to fishing. The boys there, they didn't quite understand what happened. The two guys on the road to Emmaus, we called them the Big Lip Club boys because they were walking down, lips dragging the ground. We thought he was the one. But Jesus showed up and said, I am the one. Hey! They didn't recognize what happened at the cross, but the devil knew what happened. There he was stripped of his power. Stripped. Stripped. Made an open show of. An open show. Open show. He was defeated and triumphed over at the cross through the death of a fully obedient man. And our faith in Him gives us and makes us the full, obedient children of God that He wanted when He put the earth here. Woo! Christ's obedience is full and complete and so is yours in Him. 
And now verse 26 says, But now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Jesus came to die so he could have obedient people again. He started out with a perfect man created in his image. But he failed. So God became a man and came to get us his own self. And the last man, the last Adam, endured all the way to death, obeying God. As I said this morning, Jesus is the most narrow-minded person that's ever walked this earth. He said, I'm not saying anything I don't hear my father saying. I'm not doing anything I don't see my father doing. Nothing. I can't be persuaded. No, I won't be. No, you won't put me on a throne right now. No, I won't take over and try to and try to defeat you. My kingdom is not of this world. If it was of this world, I would get thousands and thousands of angels and we would defeat you. (laughs) Jesus kept his mouth shut. When they ask him, what is truth? Standing right in front of him. The truth was standing right in front of him. Jesus is the truth. But Jesus had to die. All his obedient acts up until the cross didn't do anything for you. His obedient act of death did everything for you. Grafted you in. Get you access to everything God's offering now. See, the cross is powerful. The cross is the revival of God. There's no revival. People want to have revivals in the spring and the fall and bring somebody in and call it a spring or a fall revival. If they ain't preaching the cross, there ain't no revival there, honey. If there's going to be an awakening and a revival, it's going to come through men and women preaching the message of the cross that God says is still the power of Almighty God. And if, it, and if God sees anybody on the earth as living in obedience, it's only those who have their faith in the cross. Amen. You see, the new, the new thing, the emergent church, the apostate church is out there just doing, 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 thinking that God uses this and God uses that. We got one in our area down there on their website. It says we just want to make the unchurched feel at home. And when you come to our church, you may even hear a Beatles or a Bon Jovi song. I'm telling you, God ain't in it. God can't work in that. God does not reach out and use the world to get you in the kingdom. He points back to Calvary, and that's all he points to. And if you want to get in the move of the, God, if the Spirit of God, if, if you want to get in the kingdom, you've got to believe Jesus died for your sins. You've got to believe it in your heart. It can't just be lip service. It can't just be because Mama wants to drag you down to the altar. You've got to believe it in your heart. You, it can't just be in your head. <clears throat> There's a lot of people that are just believing in Jesus in their head. No more than they, they're not believing in Jesus no more than they believe we had a World War I and a World War II. It actually happened. They believe, okay, historically, Jesus died on a cross. But until you believe it to the point of surrendering and following him, you're not a believer. Until you believe in him to the point of following him, you're not a believer. Believers follow Christ. Everything that's labeled a Christian is not a Christian. The disciples were called Christians. And that by people outside the camp. Everything that's called Christianity is not Christian. Disciples are the only true Christians that exist. And there's no difference between a disciple and a Christian. A true Christian is a disciple. And disciples, Jesus said, you can't be my disciple if you don't take up your cross and follow me. You cannot be my disciple if you put your family before me. You cannot be my disciple. Disciples are going to heaven. Just so everything called Christianity is not going. Disciples are Christians. Not all things that are called Christians are disciples. Disciples are learners of Christ, followers of Christ. Hallelujah. I'm a follower of Christ. 
Do I trip up? Do I stagger around? Does the Lord ever once in a while have to turn around and say, get behind me, Satan? Yes, he does. But I say, glory to God, call me what you want. I'm going with you. You've got the words of life. I need to be corrected. I want to be corrected. Correct me if I'm wrong because you are my life and my everything. Sitting in that hotel room this afternoon just meditating in the scriptures and thanking God that my life is devoted to Him. Amen. That I can be somewhere this weekend, even if it's away from my family, sharing the Word of God in truth, the gospel in truth, so somebody can grab a little bit tighter grip on this thing, move in a little bit closer, touch the hem of His garment. I ain't, I'm not lonely in a hotel room. I got somebody in there with me. This woman at work, this woman at work about last year sometime, she said, man, I've been wanting to go to church for so long and I've been taking care of somebody and I hadn't been able to go and I had a chance to go Sunday and I didn't even go. And this other lady said, well, you'll get to go. She said, yeah, I'm going to try to go next Sunday and I might even go Wednesday. And the other lady said, now you ain't got to go all out like that now. I'm telling you, I'm glad Jesus went all out for me. I'm glad he was a fanatic loving me. I'm glad he loved me so much that he endured the cross unto death. He didn't quit. He didn't make excuses. He loves you. It ain't just, yeah, I love you. Yeah, you know I love you. No, he did something to prove it. Man, he obeyed the Father all the way up. Man, the crown of thorns pressed down in his skull, beaten with a cat of nine tails, bones showing. I'm talking about all that was for because he loved me. Amen. He was being obedient. Don't tell me we can't remain obedient when hard times come. Because he did, we can. Amen. Didn't you sing it this morning? Because he lives, Amen. I can face everything. You know why? Because if my faith is right, the grace of God is there. Way back a long time ago when they used to persecute Christians really bad and take their whole families that wouldn't renounce Christ and just tie them up on poles and pour oil on them and use them for street lights and light them at night. Daddies and mamas watching their little boys and girls burn as the street lights they made them out to be. And I'm going to tell you what, God gave them grace to make it through that because their faith, if you won't renounce Christ and you keep your faith right, the power of God will be in your heart, in your mind, and all in your body. And you'll be able to say, I'm a Sticking with you. I may listen, our God is able to deliver us from anything and everything, but even if he doesn't, I'm not bowing the knee to anything that's backwards from him. He will deliver. He will deliver. They might throw you in the lion's den, and the Lord might shut the mouths of the lions. But even if he doesn't, you're still His. Amen. Would you stand with me tonight? Praise God. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you that you've done everything for us. Lord, you made it so easy for us. All we got to do is believe it. But we know some days are tough. And Lord, we've got to fight those days. We've got to just fight to keep believing when we're being pulled by the world's music, when we're being pulled by the world's advertisements and everything that distracts, when we're being pulled by family members that we know love us and we love them, but they're not walking in this light. And, and Lord, they tell us they're praying for us, Lord. And we're praying for them and they think they're right. And Lord, they're trying to pull us out. God, I thank you that we can fight the good fight of faith and we can't lose for winning. We can't lose for winning because you constantly multiply grace. If there's faith, you're multiplying grace. If there's true faith in the blood of Jesus, then you're constantly multiplying your grace. And Lord, you told the Apostle Paul in his trying time with a thorn in his flesh that your grace was sufficient. We understand that today to mean that if you're working in him, that's good enough and that's everything. And we thank you that you are working in us, both to will and to do of your good pleasure. For you've given us your spirit, Lord, not to do our will, but to do your will. You've even changed our will, Lord. You've changed our will now. 
to live for you, to want to serve you, to follow you. And Lord, we just give you praise tonight for teaching us your word. Words of truth that come and establish us in this faith. That we might become pillars in the church. Pillars, Lord God. Unmovable pillars standing in your grace daily. Works seen and manifest that our works are wrought in you, Lord. That you're behind this. You're behind this. Your faith endured to the end. Your faith endured to the end. And that lets us know tonight, Lord, that if our faith is really in you, that we're going to endure to the end. We got the same faith you had, Lord. And your faith endured to the end. So we know if we'll just keep believing, we'll make it to the end. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for teaching us your word this weekend. A little bit more, Lord. A little bit more clarity of what it really means to be obedient, that we won't be carried off with just doing a bunch of things, even though we are going to be doing a bunch of things, we won't be thinking about them in the wrong way. And Lord, I thank you that you've made each one of us a witness unto you in these last days and a testimony of what you've done for us. And I pray, God, tonight that you would touch all our hearts with a little bit more of your boldness. Not meanness, God, we don't want to be mean to people. We just want to, in love, tell them the truth. We want to share your word, Lord God, with every person, Lord, that will listen. And I thank you for the days ahead. I thank you for the fresh new doors that you're going to open. I thank you, Lord God, for this ministry that you placed here in Spring, Texas. I thank you for the miracle of tomorrow that you'll provide, Lord God, for this ministry to be able to do where we know you're leading. And we praise you. It can only happen by you, Lord. It can only happen by you. We can't do anything without you. And we're praising you ahead of time for what you're about to do tomorrow. Lord, we love you tonight and we thank you for what you've done this weekend. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you need a touch from the Lord tonight, I want to encourage you to come to this altar. If you need the Lord to do something for you, I want you to come to this altar. If you're here tonight and you've only had lip service your whole life, if you're here tonight and you've heard this gospel and you really have never believed it in the heart, You've never believed it in the heart. I want you to come and say, Preacher, I, I want you to pray with me tonight. I want to be a believer. I don't want to just have the right words to say. I want to be saved tonight. I want to know when I leave that I'm going to heaven. If I die tonight in my sleep, I want to be with Jesus. And I know and I believe that all it takes is my faith in what he did for me at Calvary. Is that you, young man? Then tonight's your night. And I want you to know the angels in heaven are throwing a party right now. That might be words that sound good, but it's exactly the way the Bible puts it, that they're rejoicing over you. And tonight, I'm going to pray, and I want you to pray with me. And saying this prayer will not save you, sir, but believing it in your heart is your way in. Believing. And so, Father in heaven, repeat this prayer. Father in heaven, everybody in the room. Father in heaven, forgive me of my sin. For I truly am guilty. But tonight I come to you. In faith. I believe in your son Jesus. He died for my sins. He paid the price. For my sins. He did that for me. I believed he loved me that much. And I believe in him. And I believe that you raised him from the dead. On the third day, He is my Lord. He is my Savior. I am saved by the blood of Jesus. I want everything you're offering. Help me, Lord, to live this life. Help me to see the Scriptures in the light of you. For you are my light. In Jesus' name, amen. You're as saved as you can ever be, brother. You're as saved as you can ever be. Don't let anybody talk you out of it. They'd just be lying to you. All you got to do is believe. You're in the kingdom. You don't have to go do anything. You've done what it takes to be saved. You simply believe. I want to tell you something tonight. I listened to you just for a few minutes in there today. And the Lord has brought you through a pile of mess. He, he brought you through all that. Some people are still bound in that mess, but His hand is on you. He brought you through that. That's a miracle. 
That's a miracle. Hang on to Him. Hang on to Him. Don't ever let Him go. Don't ever look to anything else. That blood shed was for you. The cross. The cross. The cross. Love you, brother. Praise God for you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Blessed be God. What is it, Mama? Oh, all of it. Lord, you've got it all. We give it all to you. Lord, you took it all when you made us yours. We're your lambs, Lord. We're the sheep of your pasture. Donkeys carry burdens, sheep don't. So we're not carrying nothing heavy. Lord, we bring you everything that's heavy. This ministry, our families, everything about us, Lord, we give it to you. We sit at your feet and we learn of you. I thank you for this mama, this wife, this pastor. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in her, through her, Lord, which is far beyond what she can imagine and even knows. The reach of your right hand through her far exceeds what she can imagine. And I thank you for blessing her and blessing the world through the ministry you've given her. I thank you for her husband and the children you've given them. A house that has been raised up to praise you and to serve you, to see many come to Christ, many come back to Christ. I thank you, Lord, for the anointing on my sister and her children, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Whatever it is, the answer's already been told. Yes. Yes and amen. All the provision is already there. The Lord Himself will provide. The Lord Himself shall provide. And He's surely done that. Lord, I thank You for DeRitter, Louisiana, and Your hand there, Your anointing there, Your presence there. And though many are captive by the enemy, though there be many there that belong to You, and they're out of the way, I thank you for the days ahead in which, Lord, all the various ways, situations that will be placed into your people's lives, Lord God, so that you can point them back to the place of provision, the place of assurance. For I know where they are right now, Lord God, is a place where they're not just completely sure. There's no such thing without this faith. And I pray, God, you'd use Pastor Mark and his wife and their, and their family, Lord God, and all the members of, Lord, Christ's passionate church. God, to raise up a work there, Lord God, that would be a light brighter than anything around, brighter than everything seen, God. I thank you for the anointing there, Lord God. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, I just thank you for, for us being able to be here tonight. I thank you, Lord, for whatever it is that's being requested that you've already provided the answer. The problem is not you not providing. The problem is us learning how to receive it. So tonight, by faith, whatever it is, we're seeking you for. We're just believing that you're going to make the manifestation of it. Lord, first I'll ask for a closer walk with you, a better understanding of this truth each and every day of our life. Lord, for that is truly what it means to grow in your knowledge and your grace. As you begin to teach us greater truths in your word concerning your Son, and then attempt to give us grace to walk in it, may we be found as recipients of that grace, simply believing in Christ and His finished work. We thank you, Lord God. I thank you for touching these physical bodies tonight. Renewing their strength, even in their physiques, Lord God. I thank you for the soundness of the minds that you've promised to give us, the mind of Christ. And I thank you tonight for, Lord, a firm, established faith that will not be moved by family members, will not be moved by co-workers, will not be moved that everything in the past will be let go outside of this truth. For we know the strings of false doctrine. We know all the things that we were bound in. But now we know the truth. And Peter knew the truth, but he was swept away even at one point. So we know it's possible. So we're asking, Lord, for your protection. We're asking for your merciful arms around us, God. That every time we even look away, that you will gently grab our face and point it back to Calvary. Bless our families, Lord God. Cause them to see what you're letting us see, Lord God. Save our families. Save our children, Lord. 
save our spouses, God, our grandparents, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, children, parents, God. Save our families, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just believe the Lord tonight. Believe the Lord. He's able to do anything. He's able to do anything. found it. Hallelujah. Your faith, my friend, is your fire. Your faith. Father, we thank you for this family. We thank you, Lord, for, Lord, doing this miraculous work. Lord, not everybody saw what the Apostle Paul saw. You gave him the revelation of what you did at Calvary. You didn't give it to John and Peter. You didn't give it to James. You gave it to Paul. And you sent him on a mission preaching it, Lord. And not everybody believed it. But occasionally there'd be enough people to even plant a church. And Lord, I thank you for this family, Lord, that's found the place your word says that if your people are planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of their God. And I thank you, Lord, for the fire of God restored in this family's heart. I thank you, Lord, that you found the place to plant them here. For I know you will never plant any children of yours in a place that's not focused on, known for, the teaching and the preaching of the cross of Jesus Christ. And I thank you for what you're doing in this family, in this man and in this woman, in this husband and this wife, and even in their children. I thank you, Lord. For the salvation that's in this house. And I thank you for the representative being right here at the head of the house. Being hungry for a move of God. The one who is the head of the house. That's going to be the example for the rest of them. That's going to live the crucified life. That's going to fight the good fight of faith. And though he stagger and though he stumble. He shall not fall if his faith remains in you. And what you accomplished for him at Calvary. Teach them Lord to fight. Teach them to fight together. Teach them to stand in this great, marvelous grace, Lord God. For I know it is your desire. Thank you, Lord. I thank you that we don't have to look back at yesterday and feel sorry or be condemned about what we did or didn't do. We have a brand new day today. It's a brand new day. Your mercies are brand new today. And again today, we're brand new. Again today, the fire of God is in our hearts. Again today, this walk with you is fresh, just like it started today, God. And I thank you for what you're doing. In the name of Jesus. If you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost tonight, if you need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost tonight, I want it like the Bible says. I want it like the Bible says. I want it like the Bible says. I want it like the book of Acts says. I want to speak in other tongues. I want, to, I want it like the Bible says. Hallelujah. You can have it if you want it. You can have it if you want it. Do you want it? You can have it if you want it. You can have it like the Bible says. I want it all. I want it all. I want to be filled with the Spirit of God, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues and prophesying of His goodness. Oh, I want to be filled with His Spirit. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the rain. Thank you for the rain. Oh, I smell the rain. Oh, you can smell it when it's raining. Hallelujah. Faith is stirred when it's raining. Oh, let it rain, Lord God. Let it rain. Oh, you might have came in dry, but you don't have to leave dry. You might have came in dry, but you don't have to leave dry. Glory to God. He'll fill you right here tonight. He'll fill you right here tonight. Glory to God. It's a miracle what He's done in this place. It's a miracle what He's done in your heart. It's a miracle. Do you believe? Do you believe? That's all you got to do is believe. Out of that belief, you'll find God working through you. God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your presence and your power, which is your grace at work. Oh, thank you for your presence and your power, which is your grace at work in our midst. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit. 
Thank you, Lord, for the saving of the soul tonight. Thank you, Lord God. I want to stand in the gap for the guys. Yes, sir, I'm with you. The guys at work, we're believing for their salvation. And those that are saved, we're believing that you'd show them the truth. Let them see the truth. Let them come back to the truth. And those that know the truth and are walking in the truth, God, strengthen their walk with you. Strengthen their faith. Use this brother, Lord God, as a witness unto you on the job. Use this brother as the light that you've told him he is. Use this brother as the salt that you've called him. Use this brother in the midst of a dark world. For the Lamb is our light. The Lamb is our light. And the Lamb lives in our hearts. Use this brother. Use this brother that the light might shine in His workplace, Lord. I thank You for salvation. I thank You for salvation in a mighty way, Lord God. Have Your way, Lord. Thank You, Jesus. Thank You, Lord. Draw us tonight, O Lord. Draw us tonight closer and closer. Praying for your brother and your sister-in-law that they'd learn the truth. Lord, I pray that you'd use Brother Carl just to simply tell him. For we know what happens when the truth comes to us. We receive it or we reject it. And we either receive it or we reject it every day the rest of our lives. Because we're aware that we are a part of the story. We're a part of the story. And I pray, God, that you'd use Brother Carl, Lord, to bring this great truth to them. Let them see it, Lord. Let them see it. Let, Lord, I pray that you'd open their eyes, removing the blinders of Satan from upon them, that they might see this glorious gospel that can save their soul. Let them see where they stand without you. Let them see what you did because you love them. Let them see this, Lord. Let them see this great truth in the mighty name of Jesus. We're believing, hallelujah, for salvation. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord God. He is worthy. He is worthy. Lord, do a great work here in Spring, Texas. Increase, enlarge the borders of this ministry and all those who are attached to it, God. That you would bless tomorrow, Lord, people all over the earth who recognize the gospel and what it truly is. That we don't stand, Father, in your pulpits and lay a foundation with a story except your story. We don't start messages out with stories from the world. We start messages out as a foundation of what the foundation is. And then we preach that message. And I pray, Lord, for more and more people to see what the truth is. Not just through this ministry, but through all ministries preaching this gospel. That you would increase your body, strengthen your body, add to and build your body. And let us see in our little short vapor of a life, a great harvest. For our days are numbered and they are very short. Time is short, Lord, we're aware of that. Let us see a harvest in our days. Let us see a harvest, O Lord, in our communities, on our jobs, in the classroom, through the ministries you've given us. And Lord, we praise you for the special blessing tomorrow that you will provide to put us out there where we need to be. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God.